Hello again, folks. Now I'll be overviewing the matter game, basically the standard matter game. Uh, looking at the niche decks and some interesting card and deck choices, and some spicy text. So, okay, first of all, let's open up the big trifecta and um, see if I have some good tips for you with those decks. Um, not sure if you want uh, any Chandran's main deck, but that's, I imagine, ah, that's the list of um, Javier Dominguez. Uh, I don't know if you want them moving on. It's hard to actually, you know, argue at all about this list. Um, but, you know, the worlds will have consequences and people adjusting and so forth. But I don't think there's a whole lot of space for improvements or any tuning up or, you know, tacking or targeting. Basically, I would really start with the exact list for sure, even after Worlds, for um, remaining national championships and uh, the GP and the Pro Tour and so on. Don't think there's anything that's actually like questionable at all. Even though it's already hard to, you know, uh, argue about a um, very good player, very good results. That's a very respectable like tournament. Um, maybe you can sort of um, swap one PNLR in the sideboard for something more specific. Or maybe show of like one Chandra for some other tech card to target something particularly. Um, also important to note that Monroid hasn't had a great weekend at the Worlds. Um, I think it was pretty good against Blue Black, but not to an incredible uh, extent. Uh, but overall had a pretty bad win percentage and really struggled against Timor. Apparently it's a favorable matchup for Timor. Yeah, and William Jensen's list. So notice that this is basically without Scarab Gods. And uh, you have Confiscation Coup, one main one side for the opposing Scarab God. And then you have a lot of stuff actually for Blue Black, I should say. Even though Appetite is not amazing against the, the Scarab God, but it destroys the Hulks, which is pretty in insane and destroys the Surge. This is one of the big things. So even without the fourth color, the deck is actually like pretty good against blue black, I think. Um, unless there is just like a, li a line of ridiculous draws. Also note that uh, that commit to memory is basically for the gods and for um, weird spells. It also helps you to kind of reload your hand. N notes essence scatter main deck. For Mono Red, for Blue Black, for uh, Mirror Match as well. I think this is a very well rounded list. Um, I don't think there is anything you would change, except for, for certain specific metagames. Maybe you can, you know, uh, Shave of One Negate, One Appetite for something more specific for your. Um, local field, but other than that, I think you shouldn't touch much here, except maybe like fourth hydra is something I would look into. But they probably had a good um, reason to run only three. Perhaps they anticipated some blue whites. That's why maybe only three, and um, they needed more slots to have like these tech cards and so forth. Okay, um, I suppose that's Josh Arthur Layton or uh, Kelvin Chu's list. I believe they were pretty similar. Um, yeah, Vizier is a pretty spicy technology, so watch out for that. So I still don't think the 
six mana dino is that good but um, if you expect less of blue black then you might actually run it because it will ruin the day probably for uh, teamer I think but it's not that good against blue white I think Movinoni probably wants all four king pings just because mana red is pretty hard matchup I imagine So perhaps you can cut uh, some tech against uh, mirror matches like treasure map because I don't think you'll see such high numbers of the deck um, in the larger fields what else uh, maybe moving on you want one extra essence extraction that's a possibility um, yeah it's hard to really argue about the deck having kind of like zero practice against it just uh, fury crafting and um, making assumptions based on what I've seen on the stream see so yeah, you definitely have quite a few flexible slots in the deck I think uh, a lot of uh, card choices were made in here to basically target the decks that were specifically expected for the tournament so um, the builds are very geared um, for a very limited meta game. What I actually liked was that I, I saw quite a lot of like Abzan tokens online and I kind of liked the deck quite a bit. Let's see what people are trying to do with the dinos even though I don't think the deck is like that amazing. Black Redragger is pretty strong I think like one of the better decks I don't know like why it's grouped into two here I think it's largely one archetype really and uh, I don't think the builds differ all that much uh, Griggs control is interesting but it's so clunky and uh, I think it's only good for um, more specific events I think at some nationals you can kind of predict the field a bit better than for example at the GP for instance um, yeah, I really like the Esper Gift. It's weird that it's, again, two tabs for the archetype. Um, and yeah, the deck is really strong. Kind of want to see what the Black Green Snake is about and what the Chun deck is about. I think in the article that I'm going to link below that largely talks about the nature of the metagame shifts, um, I featured. Chunt's mid range and this blue black tempo. Um, I think Esper tokens or uh, is not where you want to be. Drum want to be actually on the gift train. Uh, I have Mardu and I wanted the deck to be actually good, but I don't think it is. However, uh, you put it, however, you build it. Um, yeah, this is actually weird. You have basically three taps for Marta vehicles, but we'll have a look at those. Um, what else is worth noting here? Actually, we'll have a look at the Mono Black because I think um, it's an interesting thing to have in mind when you're just freshly getting into the format. You don't want to invest too much and then just want to play um, local events and nothing big ok let's have a look at that first uh, very similar to black red dagger but I think much weaker uh, largely have mostly the same elements um, but yeah the deck uh, is definitely cheaper than one red and uh, probably cheaper than black red uh, substantially uh, on paper it's only 115 buck and yeah you pretty much have elements um, and tools to come with pretty much anything it's actually interesting to see trackers showing up at least in the sideboards here and there it's an interesting card and because of the blue black control I think um, the cards might actually shine in the format uh, well, 
Okay, maybe let's look first at um, black red or yeah, let's have a look at black red and how it actually differs from mono black variant. Uh, not a whole lot, but what you gain is that you gain a lot of reach, a uh, huge engine in the form of Hazard. Um, yeah, that's mainly it. I should say. Uh, plus some red removal. But yeah, mainly just uh, extra reach, I should say. So suppose if you don't want to spend extra 50 buck, then you might suffice just with a uh, mono black version. So it's all, it's all up to you. Okay, this is actually vehicles. The list that I think is probably has the most potential just because it has like Gideon's and Chandra's in it. Um, not sure if I'd run the same removal suit uh, and whether I would run caravans. I think I would much rather run a bunch of harvesters in the main. Don't know how Dusk Dawn actually fits into the picture. Uh, having cast out in cyber is actually pretty a good idea. I think. Uh, what else I kind of want to see? Maybe a Doomfall here and there, something like this. Some Fatal Poshes in the 75. Yeah, a bit more tools against Mono Red, I suppose. This is like pretty like classic old fashioned build. Let's look at a few more. Okay, Last Plus Walkers, Fail Potion there. Harvesters, more in the sideboard, that's good. Um, sideboard is something I like a bit more though. And Moment Courier kind of switching on the spires, which is a good thing to do. Ruin Raider for the. Um, extra draws not a, the worst idea i think this list was actually featured in uh discussed in detail in the uh, recent small article by eric frolic uh hazard is a um interesting feature of the deck one of the major differences not sure how i feel about it in this particular deck i suppose it's all right so it tries to be a hybrid uh, between classic Mardu and Mono Red, basically, I don't know what I feel about it. The deck went 5 0 in the league, but you know, you have to um, look at all that with skepticism. Another interesting build again, Bomads, uh, even more hybrid stuff like P and uh, Crusher, even Chandra's in the main. No fatal push in the main or in the sideboard apparently, which is kind of a PT as well. Uh, kind of classic sideboard for some reason has written the sideboards. Uh, I think if you want to play it, then you play it main deck. Settle is sort of weird, and none of the builds actually run a fourth of the consoles. So I'd run at least one in the sideboard of this deck helps. With Monarch, that can be a tough matchup actually because of all the upgrades and just um, them being a bit faster in general. Okay, this is Blue Black Temple, which I like a whole lot. Uh, everything in here is majestic and uh, provides a ton of value. It's the ultimate hatred deck. Actually, a friend of mine tried to brew something like this, but it was drastically different this deck is kind of on the expensive side especially on paper just because of the hostage takers that kind of spiked and especially the scare goods so if you look for a more budget alternative don't look at this deck of course the rascal's contempt spiked of course again because of the um blue black control lily is interesting in this deck provides a lot of value here actually uh, kind of one of the <coughs> major engines in here. Really cool, sweet deck. I like it much more than Blue Black Control, but I'm not sure um, whether it's more effective or not. It contributes to a small percent of the meta game, uh, but 
Um, this particular list, what is it? Finished like ninth for something at the last online PTQ. So finished seven two. So yeah, you should keep an eye on this deck. Okay, let's first look at black green snake or black green energy. What changed? Okay, the booter is the um, tight hollow's color impersonator. What else? Uh, that's probably not what they're supposed to be. It's probably the Glinsleaf Siphoner instead. So this card. This is a typo. Weird to have only one copy of the card in here. Um, yeah, quite like the quite like the deck, I suppose. Even though there are ways to improve it, uh, I think, and tune in as well. Weird to see Manglehorn in here. I'm not sure there are enough of targets in the current matter for it. Crushing Camp MP is kind of weird. I think the appetite for the unnatural is probably better. I think I want to see more cartouches for the Monorad matchup. Yeah, so some numbers have to be brushed in here. But there are some questionable choices. Like the extra defense, I'm not sure you really need it. In the cyber, especially. In I want to see more cartouche, I want to see something else instead of the Mango Horn and Canopy. But this was very early and the deck didn't perform all that well. So suppose um, that person was preparing for a different metagame that actually turned out that day. Right, same open. At, uh, what is it now? One and a half week ago, basically. This one I kind of like a little bit better and it's a giant version. Um, not sure I would s still run this possess. I think Lost Legacy is still much better. Because you can take the Hulks away, for example. I oh, know you can't take the Hulks away. You can take the Scarab Guard away. This possess takes the Hulks away. Um, but I'm not sure. I'd that's still great um, tool. I think I would want to see more of the contempts instead. Other than that, looks probably better than the um, the previous list that we looked at. Yeah, this one is probably much better. I don't know why it's. Um, Mentioned John is just in, in here, just black green, which is quite alright for me, I suppose. Yeah, I like the list with a few exceptions. I think it's pretty good. I think you want to see actually the six mana Vraska here as well in the sideboard, or five mana Nisa. Um, but maybe in this energy, a bit slightly faster version, Guantes are um, better because they're simply cheaper. But, anyways, I want to see more contempts, that's for sure. I think Dispossess kind of cuts it. Other than that, quite alright. I would try this list in the testing for in, from Nationals to other events to Opens. Uh, I mean, SG Classics. <clears throat> That's an Esper gift, the um, build that actually top headed that first SG open. Uh, Squire is kind of weird in this deck, but Wolves it works. It lets you bean stuff, which is what you need for the gift. Basically, I think everything here works super well, considering the theme of the deck. Um, yeah, actually, no, nothing weird. 
um, to me in the sideboard either. I don't think you have to change anything in this deck. It's as far as this R-Type is concerned, I suppose this is near ideal. Own version of it. Uh, I suppose it might struggle a tiny bit versus mono red, but once you get the Angel of Invention online, it's kind of hot to lose. The gate kind of like uh, gains you some life as well. Perhaps a few more tools against mono red. Well, you have kind of like the hulk to clear the board. But I think you want to run the free man like the champions as well somewhere to improve the Monroe matchup. Otherwise, I think I'm kind of happy with this. Sure, you have Vona, but um, don't think it's quite that enough. Mm, don't know how good uh, the card is in this deck. Probably good because of the gift. And the scarabs. I'm on the fence here. Dinos, a deck that actually haven't showed up anywhere really. Okay, it showed up at that open, but at a pretty low position, and we haven't really seen it online. Oh, it's a pity it's a sweet deck, but it's lacking things. I'm not sure if similar is the actually fits in here but it does give double strike to your uh, big meat so that's important to notice and then actually it helps against more so that's um, the damage that you can divide uh, is probably very very handy I know something is probably missing there maybe the deck hasn't been like played that much or tested that much, but I feel like it it's bound to actually be doing things. Perhaps perhaps the Monroe matchup is not particularly amazing, but there are certainly ways to improve it if you really have to. The deck is not that cheap either, which is kind of annoying but yeah I hope the deck will show up because we'll see it after rotation but I want to see some good builds before that because well if that deck actually becomes viable I think ma magic as a whole uh, will be in a good place as a game um, yeah I have some tokens a deck that I also like quite a bit so you have token generator a bunch of token generators the map kind of ties things together and just early fixing for the light splash uh, main deck for Vascus and I think that's basically it but the point why is it, it's in the deck it's just a flexible um, answer to a lot of things and it's also a token generator and you really abuse it with the another procession so you get the doubles of all the tokens from Raskus stockpile and the landing, right, and uh, all the embalms as well. I think the deck has a pretty good uh, Moonrod matchup, perhaps quite a decent Timur matchup. We have a um, fair amount of interaction. Uh, and maybe a little struggle in Spool Black. Then again, you just put in Forgeress and you have the writing capacities so maybe it's not all that bad you have the Adam to making tokens all the time especially processions that two tokens every turn but I suppose if you don't resolve Fraska or um, things like that well, okay you have the OC the Glafas as well for a blue black matchup imagine that's pretty good there so um, extra jaws and then uh, once you get low from the beat downs from their hogs and scarabs this flips and becomes a really good um, 
survival engine if you really have to but yeah the deck looks good and I've seen quite a fair bit of it um, online I think this deck is good but I haven't actually seen it in practice I think the Sanskrit champion has to be somewhere in the 75 in this deck just a solid if I'm on matchup and perhaps uh, the teamer as well I suppose if you don't see much of um, blue black this deck is good ah and fresh maps also helps against uh, blue black so yeah have a pretty good uh, sideboard for um, blue black and you probably should be pretty good game uh, overall against all the aggressive decks and the yeah extraction is probably coming in handy against uh, mono red and teamer so yeah really like the deck what can i say um should we deep into something crazy well just to round it up I, I th wasn't there like some budget deck for lads that just don't uh still want to play the format but do not want to you know um, take up too much for it. Well, okay, like the the, the monument deck. Um, what is it? It also actually went like to eleven for twelve at that online PPTQ, and then um, yeah, I think there were a couple of good budget decks. For instance, this one just fifty buck. It looks really good um, for your local games to play. There's really nothing expensive. It's just about the lands mo mostly. And uh, yeah, I think you can pull out a fair fight against um, most of the top decks. Deck is quite aggressive, and uh, just because of all those uh, counter spells and stuff, you can actually get through and then the booter and so on. So, yeah, try it. You can also tune the deck the way you want to. I think Bull Black uh, colors as a whole have a lot of tools for all kinds of matchups right now. Don't be surprised by Hopu Gearper and Black Keeper in here. They're basically to synergize with the favorable wins in here. And yeah, pretty much all of you can just play whatever one mana flyers in here in the deck, but um, each of these two actually have added benefits in the longer game. I don't know really which one is better. I think it's. Ah, I suppose, like, the only reason why you're not playing four hopes in here and playing. F two keepers uh, just because uh, hope is legendary and I think in this aggro deck this might be problematic at times yeah overall good budget choice uh, this is slightly less budget but actually I think more competitive yeah when 70 at the list under PT was it actually PTK I think it was PTQ but might have uh, I guess it's been just a uh, PTQ uh, is usually supposed to haven't changed the system yet. Dusk Zone is weird, uh, but it's mostly to return back your own cards. Um, the deck haven't really gained all that much from the new set. Um, but yeah, Sunwind is interesting, replacing Talia from before. Gem. Kind of budget interesting deck that somehow performed reasonably well online at um, I would say major tournament. So have an eye on it if you actually played with the deck in the last season. You might want to try this out. You basically have tools to fight whatever matchup you want. Alright, that roughly wraps it up for me for this time. Until later, bye folks.